Welcome back to the Ruck and Chuck Rugby Channel. Today, we have a big one. We're going to be previewing the South Africa versus Ireland group stage game. I know there should be a final, but this is the group stages. And to help me along with this one, I'm going to welcome in uh, my pal, Ruck. Welcome, Ruck. How are you doing? Hi, hi, Chuck. Wow, what a weekend awaits us. It's going to be a thriller. This could be the World Cup final. So I'm looking forward to one versus two. A big one coming up. Chuck, take us into the lineup. The lineup. Let's see what's what's happening there. Okay, so I'm going to start off light. I think we should start off with the Irish team. I think uh, everyone sort of knows what the <laughs> Irish are going to put on the board. It's basically the same team. So we're going to start off at one. So we've got Andrew Porter, Ronan Kelleher. Tad Furlong, Tad Byrne, James Ryan, Peter Omani, Josh van der Fleer, Kalen Doris, Jamison Gibson Park, Jonathan Sexton, James Lowe, Bundy Aki, Gary Ringrose, Mac Hansen, and Hugo Keenan. Um, I think, yeah, let's just go through the bench as well, because I think the bench is quite an important topic in this week's episode. So, Dan Sheehan, David. Kilcoin, Finley Beelham, Ian Henderson, Ryan Bird, Connor Murray, Jack Crowley, Robbie Henshaw. And then for the news of the week, I think that's that's the only thing we can say is the Bok team. But let's let's start off with with the full team. Let's start off with Steven Kitzoff, Bong Gimlambi, Franz Malherber, Eben Etzebe. Franco Mostert, Sir Khaleesi, Peter Steff Dutoy, Jasper Visa, Faf de Klerk, Marnie Leboc, Cheslin Colby, Damien Delendi, Jesse Creel, Kurt Leonen, sir, and Damien Willem, sir. But I think the biggest news of all lies in this bench that the box have put out. It's a 7 1 split. We've got Dion Free, yeah. Oxen Chair, Trevor Nyakane. Sean Klein, the Irish man coming back to haunt the Irish. <laughs> Archie Snowman, Marco von Staden, Quacha Smith, and Kurbus Reiner. Now, Yo, what, what do you think of that? Those I've names. never been so excited for a scrum. Hey, Yo, <laughs> that second half, that 45 minute scrum session is going to be a banger. I'm going to look forward to how Trevenia Kane and Ox. Um, comes up and just absolutely destroys them. Yeah, I mean it's going to be it's going to be entertainment today, eh? and uh, just seeing I don't know what what's that guy's name, Matt Matt something, uh, just going on about the seven one split and how it's unfair and bringing up a few sob stories. It's just it's just entertaining, you know. <laughs> I don't know about you, but. Uh, yeah, he's talking know. about the, the world rugby union should yeah. change the rules. And, you know, it's funny, you know, it's always, it's like the United States, you know, you're not going, you, you're not doing things right if you're not sued, right? It, you yeah. are, <laughs> you're not doing things right in rugby if the guys aren't complaining about changing the, the rules. Chuck, I want to just, just quickly point out a few things. Oh, Aris, go ahead. I have a, I have a great team. They have a fantastic team. They have squad depth, and they've outperformed all the top teams and the number one ranked. All right, but if you Google these players and you just look at, this is like the back row of the forward pack. Are you looking at right? their size? I'm just looking at their size. I'm even I'm even looking at their faces, like Peter Omani or Peter O. Just help me out there, Chuck. You know, yeah, it's Peter Omani. You got, you got it right. Peter Omani, thanks. <laughs> and Jasper Visa. I mean, you can't compare these guys. Peter Steff the toy. Okay. How can you say Peter Steff won't absolutely mess up Josh van der Fleer? I know he's been rated as the best player in the world. I mean, I, I think because but... I think it's just a surname. That's why they thought he's from South Africa. Found the, uh, they thought he's from South Africa, so yeah. he's actually good, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. I think that's the only Maybe reason. that's they got confused. Yeah. Let's, yeah, let's they were like Fleer, that that sounds 
you know, South African. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Kalyan Doris against Sia Khaleesi, I mean, you just can't compete. And then you need to take into account that the front five of the Aries are are pathetic at the moment. I mean, I think the, countless... they're probably the best. The best out of the five is probably Tad Furlong. That's that's the probably the only name that I uh, that sort of sticks out for me. I don't know about yeah. you. Yeah, I'm, I'm just they can't compare. If you if you take it's a Beth and you take James Ryan, right? <laughs> it's going to be a brutal battle according to all the news statements. But we all know who's going to come out on top of that one. <laughs> it's going to be it's a Beth. <laughs> so it's going to be a big game, but. Unfortunately, rugby is win one on on the right field at the on the well, on the field, but like the forwards make yeah. in the scrum. The damage, eh? That's where the damage in the scrum in the line in the, the rucks. Yeah, it's where it's going to happen. And if you take the look at Tonga and Ireland in the previous game, so Ireland played well. Tonga won, was a bit disappointing, but but they were quite physical. Turnovers, then. they were physical, but Tonga. Won six turnovers, that so is... they got six turnovers, and Aris, um, Ireland lost fourteen. So yeah. that's six turnovers won and fourteen lost. And you can't play like that against South Africa. And besides the amount of opportunities that Ireland squandered by dropping a ball or a pass just not sticking, if you're going to play against South Africa in our rush defense, you need to you need to get those balls in the hands. Yeah, otherwise it's just not going to work. And if we look at the the Scotland game, the way we managed to rush Finn Russell, he, yes. you know, there were a few hits on him, and he knew we were there. We didn't, we didn't, exactly. we didn't let him have his own way, kind of thing. We made we made that first hit in the first minute, eh? You know, it's you know, in rugby, <laughs> you, you you make that first hit on the guy in the first minute. You make him, you make him know you're there, and I think that's what we need to do to Sexton, so he knows we're not here to play games and. He is not going to have his own way. So yeah, yeah. it's like if you take out Johnny Sexton, you take out Ireland. Um, it's definitely if I have to point out the main tactic, besides the seven-one split, it's going to be Ireland trying to rush and be in the face of Marnie LeBook and put a lot of pressure on the young man. And they're going to rush the forwards on him. They're going to rush the inside centers on him, but. I think Marnie has the skills and the footwork mm. to to evade that. And I think he's going to kick and he's going to outplay them. And I just think that, unfortunately, Johnny Sexton's body won't be able to handle those hits. And no. we're just going to... If we take him out, that's game over for them. Who do you think is going to have his number? Who's going to be the guy assigned to the Sexton chase? Is this going to be like <laughs> whoever's closest to him or... Is there going to be like, you know what, Peter Stiff, you know, put your put your body on the line, you know, um, up against Sexton. Like, just smash him as hard as you want. Well, I can tell you that Quacker Smith is drooling. <laughs> and he's probably, I know he's on the bench, but he's just, he's warming up now. He's like, probably has a bag of Johnny Sexton somewhere on the field. Mm. He's just <laughs> constantly looking at it. But I have to say, I think, I think a guy who's got Johnny Sexton's number will be someone like Franco Mostert. If I look at the way he targeted uh, Finn Russell and mm. how he rushes the kicks, I think he's going to he's going to make a his presence felt. Yeah. Then um, Chuck, I wanna I wanna ask you what you what your opinion is with Andy Farrell and them sticking to their guns and not making any changes to their team and with the seven one split not doing anything to to try and at least you know dim the power well i think they they currently they're probably just looking for um good consistency and you know cuz you know when once you get into a routine kind of thing especially in sport you it's good for knowing where a guy will be and not having to second think what um your teammates gonna do so. I think it's it's good in that sense, but fatigue in in World Cups um, is a factor, and it has been a bit warm in France, and I'm not sure how um, the French have 
or how they i mean the, the irish what i'm saying the french i don't know how the irish deal with the the french warmth and i'm not sure how they yeah. deal with warmth in in general kind of thing <laughs> so and saying that you know these leinster and monster players they never travel outside of ireland you know when it's a urc they always send second string teams and johnny sexton's always set up in dublin you know he always he always has a rest at his tender age of 38 so it's going to be interesting to see how many games he can play consecutive consecutively at this high level and not drop not drop his level kind of thing so that's yeah a good point. that's a very good point and considering the fact that if you're going to face South Africa knowing that we can be structured and dominant but last week we showed that we can have quick feet and we can play and we can kick the ball and the cross kicks we can chip so I don't know. I think Ireland, um, with the heat, as you mentioned, with Johnny Sexton being tired, is just not going to work out for them. Another point I want you to analyze for me, Chuck, is the the fact that we didn't pick Dwayne for Millen. You know, you want someone physical, you want someone dominating the runs. Why won't we put him on the bench or the start? Yeah, no, at, at first I thought about, you know, yes, Dwayne for Mullen. Um, he's such he's such a, a beast in this box team. You know, whenever you think of of um, a turnover in in the ruck, you always think of Malcolm Marks and Dwayne Vermeulen. Those are the two that always pop into my head, and maybe Dion Ferry as well. But then I thought about going with a seven-one split um, and playing Quaha because I looking at it now, I know that Quaha plays eight, and because of his sevens experience, he could drop into the back line and play center and I, so so i think it brings um versatility in in that decision and yeah so that's why i think they've gone for Quaja instead of Dwayne, who doesn't offer um as much in the back line as Quaja would would probably yeah. offer to us yeah yeah and and speaking about the man himself malcolm marx being out when he was on his form of his life. And he, we've got Marco von Staden who can probably take his place in on um coming up. Mm. What's your what's your view on, on the hooker situation and just, you know, do we will we feel him will he, his presence be missed or do you think we've got it covered? I think um Dion Ferry has played there in the past um mm. as hooker. So he hasn't played there recently um, as much because for the Stormers, he's a flank. He plays a flank. So playing at hooker is obviously different from playing um, yeah. in there. But I think obviously the, the most challenging part of the whole thing will probably be the line of throws um, and getting those accurate um, during the game, under pressure, getting the calls right. That'll probably be the most um, challenging part for his whole thing as a hooker um even for van staden because he hasn't played as much as uh dion as his hooker so i think the most challenging will be the line outs for them because yeah. i think in the, in the scrum you kind of you have a few guys around you you can probably cover up <laughs> i've never been in the scrum you know <laughs> i was a winger yeah. so <laughs> yeah it's, so it, the, the scrum isn't too. that bad, really. The scrum, it's it's mostly just a line and, and I guess where you fit into the on the field. But that's that's very easy to learn. And mm. um, I think Dion Fury actually, he can be a great asset when he's on the field with Peter Steph and Sia Kulisi and then mm. Kwaha Smith or um, Jasper Devisa. Then, that's a good point, Chuck. Then another thing is... Who do you think will be the primary kicker? Do you think they'll give Moni Le Book the first shot, or do you think they're going to go with, with Faf straight from the get go? I think they might give Moni the kicking. I think, you think they've so? backed him. I think they've backed him a lot. Um, I think for kicks out far, maybe Faf because I've seen him pop a few yeah. from quite far out. So, yeah, I think the more sort of finesse, accuracy, close ones um, is Marnie's, but anything outside of, I don't know, how many meters is Marnie's kicking rent? But when he gets a bit too far, I think 
then we can call on Faf. Yeah, because unfortunately yeah. we don't have uh, Franz Stein <laughs> in there. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, the big man Franz Stein. Yeah, well, I, I think, but I, I do think that we have keeping covered. And mm-hmm. to be honest, I think we didn't even need to be worried about kicking. I think we will probably put fifteen points over Ireland easily. Um, one thing that I do need to point out is that out of all the European teams. Ireland actually has our number in the from all our previous matches there was one draw we've won 18 and Ireland has won eight out of our encounters which is actually a very impressive statistic taking into account the southern hemisphere team to compare to a northern hemisphere team so and Ireland is is number one so perhaps my prediction of we taking the game with by 15 points might be might be too optimistic in South Africa's favor. I don't know what you think of that. I don't know. I I've never I know Ireland are number 1 but in my head I I don't think they're the number one performing team at the moment. Oof. I don't know about you but I've seen this in the URC you know, we've we we had our teams go and outperform them in their own backyard. You know, Leinster. I know Munster won it this year, but we've had the URC twice, twice in a row here in South Africa, yeah. right? And most of our players are playing overseas, so I don't know um, how that translates to this. But there's quite a few players who are in that Leinster and Munster setup that do play yeah. for the the Irish team. So if they can't convert it under pressure there at home, you know, how are they going to do it elsewhere, you know, away yeah. from home? So I'm looking so. At, 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 at Rowan O'Gara's, uh, Rowan O'Gara's theory on how the box will be beaten by Ireland. And I'm, and I now to bring up Munster, I remember specifically how, how I looked at that game and how they just kept the ball tight between 9 and 10 and the forwards and they just were low and hard and they went and they scored tries like that and according to Ogara and they had Arkes Neyman uh, of course they had Arkes yeah. Neyman now come have. on I mean, you have to have a South African in there to tell them how to and that's the thing about, about the teams about the South African teams in the URC we, we don't really have foreign players playing in our in our teams you know, all of them are playing for these Irish teams or some of the what the English teams as well, so the French teams. So yeah, yeah. you know, we've we've got to figure out our own game at home here. Yeah. yeah, the one thing that I've seen more of our rugby is the cross kick game. That's something that we didn't usually do: is kicking behind the players, like yeah, the box for, as an attacking. Box well no box kicks we did a lot but I mean more like yeah. rubbers chippies trying oh, to yeah. get to the corners. I think that's, that's, that's more... something that we added to. Yeah, and I think that's more Marnie's skill set are those grubbers and stuff. Mm. You know. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. Listen, I I do think this game is going to be exciting, and I do think that there's going to be a lot that's going to come out of this game that's going to give us a bit of an insight into how the World Cup is going to end or continue. The one thing that we just finally, like, finalizing up this preview is we've already played Scotland. We've got yeah. Scotland in the bag. Yeah. Winning this game or losing this game doesn't really matter to us. Yeah, yeah. Ireland, on the other hand, they're playing us. They get, after playing Tonga, they're going to be tired and they're going to be under pressure and then they need to still face Scotland to get through. And I wonder if that thought on the back of their head will just be enough for them to say, hey, listen, we should probably just go easy on this one. Yeah. But that's that's what I thought. But Andy Farrell and the team and, and how I know Ireland and what I've heard is that they can go full on. So I'm just I'm just worried, hey. I'm worried that they go full, they lose, and then they lose against uh, Scotland and they, they might not even make it through to the... Um, Knockout stages. So is Ireland's last game Scotland? 
Ireland is playing Scotland. Let's have a quick look. Um, I wanted to say after us. I think they're playing Scotland. I think they after play. Us. I think they play us. Then they play um, Scotland after that. Um, yes. Yeah, because they just played Tonga. So they've got us. Then they've got Scotland. And that's yes. That's all the games. So that's big. That's that's big, so, right? So they've got two crunch games. Yes. Oh, but so, they uh, have uh, they have the one week off though. I see, because it's the twenty third and then the seventh. So I still think I still think they're going to be flustered because even if you go on full on, right, it takes you longer than two weeks to recover fully, and. Scotland has been recovering because they've played us, they've made the mistakes in the first game, and they they had relatively easy games and a break. And now yeah, they're gonna yeah. so they're gonna be full of confidence where Ireland's not gonna be. I think this is a really interesting game mentally more than anything else. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be a it's definitely gonna be an interesting one. Uh with Scotland, Ireland. Because I, I, Ireland better hope they get they come come out clean this game you know unscathed there's no injuries no injuries they better hope six and they yeah i don't know how they, they can't keep him in in cotton wool or bubble wrap or whatever because yeah. he's got and he's got to step up and and the box are gonna be gunning for him dude i don't know who's Shut someone's someone's gonna make a big hit on him i'm telling you now he's gonna be caught you know with sure. ball the ball in his midriff kind of thing and someone's gonna hit him like a laptop dude yeah, <laughs> hit him like a laptop. Yeah, so hit him and it's gonna fold like that, dude. <laughs> so I mean, Chuck, I heard that you run the numbers on a particular center from Ireland, and that this game is gonna is gonna be giving a card. Oh yeah, um, Bandi Aki um has just been in not the form of his life, but he's been playing relatively good. And things are sort of going his way. And, you know, he hasn't he hasn't been caught, you know, with any disciplinary action. And I think um, if the numbers are correct and the the law of percentages and averages, I think he's his due a red card in this game. Um yeah, <laughs> I think I think we you heard it here first. Bandi Aki will he's get a red, a red card. card. He's get a red he's gonna get a red card in this game. It's going to be something to do with a head and a shoulder, probably. That's what he's known for. His his track record has it on there. So he's due one. And, you know, this is the, the perfect time to to rear that that head of his, you know. <laughs> yeah, I think it's it's time for Bundy to to shine, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So is that uh, is that all for this um, week, Chuck? Is that is that all for, <laughs> is that That's all for this all. week, Rock? That's all, Chuck. I think it's been a good episode, and I think we have a fantastic game coming up. Yeah. Stay safe, people. Have a yes. wonderful evening. Enjoy the game. Um, let's, uh, let's go, Boca. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Thanks for watching. For more great content, please like, share, and subscribe. Click the bell icon to keep up to date with our uploads.